to launch a new series today, Built for Battle, or Built for the Battle. How many believe you're built for the battle? Amen. You say, why do you have that title, Pastor, Battle? I don't want a battle. I don't like a battle. I don't want to fight, Pastor. Well, the truth is, the kingdom of heaven that you're part of suffers violent, and violent men take it by force. So and the reality is, if you're going to receive from God anything, anything, there's going to be a fight on, you're going to have a fight on your hands. And it's a fight of faith where the enemy's going to try to fight you and stop you from receiving what God has. Because your blessing is in the hand of the enemy right now. And you got to take it back. Amen. And he doesn't want to give it up, but he has no choice. He has to give you back everything he stole. And that means everything. Come on. I said everything that was stolen has to come back to you. So point number one, expansion always brings spiritual resistance. In Joshua chapter 1, 2 and 4, it says, Now then, you and all these people, oh, I love this word, say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready, get ready. To cross over into the land I am about to give them. Your territory will expand and extend. So God is talking about natural possessions. He's talking about their real estate growing, their, their finance growing, their families growing, everything in their lives, physically, financial, financially, building the temples of God. All of it, their whole spectrum of life was about to expand and grow. And how many know when you get born again, you serve the God that grows. You serve the God that expands. That's why they say galaxies are still forming. They don't even know about because when God said, let there be light, he never took it back. It's just light, 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 light. They'll never catch up to all the galaxies because you serve the God that's forever expanding. And when you and I decide we're going to obey God and follow God, that means God's going to, he's going to have you grow. He's going to have you expand. And this is what God is telling Joshua. He says, you're going to expand, but the problem is you're going to go into an enemy's house because the enemy is living in your house right now. There's a big-headed giant living in your house, driving your car, sleeping in your bed, wearing down your couch, and you're going to go in, and you're going to take possession of that land. How many believe it's time to expand? It's time to grow. And, and just that statement alone will require resistance from the enemy. And then also at the same time, I feel like God has put in my heart to prepare the church. That yes, we're going to expand and we're going to go into the arena. We're going to believe God that thousands are going to come to Christ. And the enemy's not just going to sit there and let us take all your families to heaven. Get all your family saved. He's going to try to fight us. But we're going to be prepared for the battle. And we're going to take the spoil. And that's the souls of men. That's your son. That's your daughter. That's your uncle, that's your aunt, that's your children, that's your family. Come on, shout like we're going to expand. That's why the scripture says they preached the gospel in that city and made many disciples. Imagine in a year from now, your son or your daughter, your drug, that's a son that may be on drugs and far from God or whatever, in a year from now, they're a disciple, they're running a group, they're plugged in the church, they're serving God, they're on fire. Come on, I believe God is able. Taking territory. Taking territory. The devil will try to bully you and I and say it's not going to happen and it's not going to change and nothing's going to get better, but he's a liar. And that's why in the spirit world, you have to drive those, th those things out so God can put his presence there. And where was a habitation of demonic activity, it's now a habitation of God. What was a temple of demonic spirits is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. That doesn't just happen. There's a battle that happens there. For the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this age, Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ. So right now, how many people that are going to come to the arena in the 4th of July weekend, they're going to come and they're going to, and they're, they're dark and they're blind, they're not, no light, and the gospel is going to be preached. And for the first time, the blinders are going to lift. They're going to see Jesus for who he is. They're going to accept him as Lord and their life's going to be forever changed like mine was, like yours was. There's a battle there. There's a fight. And we have to be prepared for the battle, not only individually, but corporately. We have to be ready as an army to go forward. The church is a family. Yes. The church is a bride. Yes. The church is a body. 
Yes, the church is all those things. But you got to remember, the church of Jesus Christ is also an army. And we have been given marching orders. Go in to the enemy's camp. Come on, somebody, and take back the souls of men. How many believe God is looking for a soul-winning army? Say amen to that. Mm, every, all these, nowadays, everyone's looking for a purpose in life. What's my purpose? What's my purpose, pastor? What's my purpose? And I say, your purpose is the same. Your purpose is to save souls. And then make that soul into a disciple and a follower of Christ. That's simple. Everyone's called to, to win souls. Say, I'm a soul winner. I'm called to win souls. I'm called to win souls. I'm called by God. If not, Christianity becomes dangerous. Because, you know, God wants to heal you and fix you and restore you and prosper you and bless your life. And he's giving you that abundant life, just like he wants to do it for me. He's a good God. But that's not all he wants. He wants your life to be an example for others to follow. He wants your life to be a light in the middle of darkness. He wants your life to be hope to the hopeless. He wants your life to be healing to the, the sick. He wants your life to bring restoration to the broken. True Christianity is not Christianity until the blessing God gave you, you gave it to somebody else. And you'll never have great fulfillment in life until you take what God did for you and you give it to somebody else. Freedom you have received and freedom God has commanded us to give. I declare over this church, you are a blessing to your family. You are a blessing to this city. You are a blessing to this nation. You are a blessing to, the, to your school. You are a blessing. Number two, let's write this down or you got your notes. The shield of faith, this is going to get good, quenches, say quenches, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ephesians 6, 11 and 12 and 16, let's read together out loud, ready, read. Put on, now I stop, put on. We're going to break some religious tradition here. All right, all right. Tell your neighbor, what does put on mean? Does that mean your mom's going to put it on for you or your, your husband's going to put it on or your wife or your, what does put on? Tell them that means you got to do it yourself. Your pastor can't do this for you. Your leader can't do this for you. Your spouse can't do this for you. Your mom can't or your dad. Put on. Say, put on. Put on. Whose job is that? Say, that's my job. Put on the whole armor of God. All right? So who's going to put that armor on for you? Who? You are, pastor. Don't put that on me. That's way too much responsibility. I'll, che I'll teach you how to put it on. I'll, I'll, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to teach you how, but I can't do it for you. Tell your neighbor, and if you're wearing the armor, that's the wrong neighbor, but because you're such a loving person, turn to them again and say, because you're wearing that armor, tell them, you're going to be able to stand against the schemes and the strategies and the plots and the plans of the devil. How many believe you can out scheme and out plot every trick of the devil? And then it goes right on to say, for you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but your battle is against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness. Of this age. Spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So there's ranks to these devils. They have a th different levels of authority. Some are big time devils. Some are little time. But no matter who they are, they're all defeated. No matter principality, power, ruler, all the, no matter what strategy they come up with, according to the Bible, if you're wearing the armor... None of them can whoop you. Not one of them. Or stop you. Or block you. That means whatever devil has what belongs to God, you can take it back when you're wearing that armor. I feel like hitting somebody. Say, put that armor on, man. 
Well, how do you take it off? Well, right there it tells you. The moment you and I begin to see people as the devil and as our enemy, you know right there, that's one of the ways you take the armor off. Don't get offended at me. Come on. I love you. I think I'm going to have to preach right there all night, all day, right there. All night, all day. Come on. You say, why, Pastor? Because we have been trained by society, by our upbringing, by life, to see people as the enemy. We call them the man. They're holding me back. Can I help you? Nobody can hold you back. Nobody can stop you. And nobody can block you. When you get a hold of faith, all things are possible. Shout amen. I'm going to go deep here. I learned this early on with my walk with God. People, say it, people, including mother-in-laws, including family members, including evil bosses, including governments, <laughs> You're getting quiet on me. People are not our enemy. The devil is enemy number one. Now, here's the tricky part. The devil can use you against me. So when, say the devil's using you to, to come against me. You're talking. He's using you. So what's my flesh say? What's the fool? Oh, sorry about that. Ha -da 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 -da. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I have an option. Am I going to am I going to oppose you as my enemy or do I realize it's not you, but there's a spirit that's working through you. I'm not going to I'm going to love you, but cuz I'm commanded to love you. I'm going to love you, but I'm going to deal with what's trying to drive you cuz that's the thing that's trying to rob my harvest and I am about to get my harvest robbed. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. All your haters. Some of you got haters. Your social media, you know, your big bloggers here, they hate on you, make comments about you. So what? They ain't your enemy. They ain't your enemy. People ain't your enemy. Talk, 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 talk. Do whatever you want to do, but you can't stop me because I recognize you're not my enemy. My enemy's my enemy, and that's what I'm going to fight. But if he can get us focused on people, he's got us beat. That's one of his schemes. That's why, uh-oh. Y'all want a word or not? Because I can feel a little like, okay, look at me, look at me. This is a problem in marriage. This is what I learned in marriage. Sit down. This is what I learned in marriage. You ready? Be angry, but don't sin. Well, how do you do that? First of all, if you're angry, try to shut up. Because once you say it, it's hard to take it back. Secondly, don't go to bed with it. Do your best to let it go. Because the Bible said that's an open door for the enemy. It didn't say don't be angry. You're going to get angry. That's part of life. But don't sin when you're angry. And don't go to bed like that. Before you go to bed, let it go. It's been a lot of nights. Me and Pastor Liz have been up 2, 3 in the morning. And I'm tired. She's tired. But we got to duke this thing out, girl. Because we can't go to bed like this. Come on, girl. Right? Straight out. Straight out of Whittier. We're like, no, 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 I ain't waking up no sick and all that stuff. No, no, no. I like my healing. I said, I like my health. I like wealth. I like the blessing. I don't want to be all broke and beat up, open the door. Come on in, devil. No. Nah. Because Liz is not my enemy and I'm not her enemy. And I don't know, I, have, I didn't preach this to the last service this much, but there's people here, you're all in the flesh right now. I mean, you got, you got targets on people's back. You got a list of enemies. And you're like, how come I got no victory? Because you fight the wrong enemy. People are not your enemy. The devil is your enemy. I'm not justifying what they're doing. A lot of them are being used by the devil, but I'm not going to focus on your issue and make your issue my issue. Your issue is your issue. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to rebuke that spirit. I'm going to go forward and I'm going to take authority. Shout like you got authority. All right. 
Let's go. I'm going to say one more thing, and then we got to move on. Come on, this is 12 o'clock service. I'm feeling like ready to something. All right. All right, you ready? You ready? You still with me or not? All right. Say it out loud. I am victorious. Are you or not? Say, I am victorious because Jesus went to hell, beat the devil up, stripped him, disarmed him, wiped him out of them, wiped him out. Mike Tyson KO'd him, never woke up since. How much power? How much victory does Satan have over Jesus right now? Come on, I want to hear you. Are you sure about that? So I I had a UFC match, Jesus, coming in at 183. And the devil coming in at whatever. And we let him fight, right? It wouldn't even be a fight. Jesus like, I ain't going in the ring. I already beat him. He's done. It wouldn't even be a fair fight. No, really, it would, it, it would be like, you couldn't even watch it, it would be horrible. He has no arms, no feet, disarmed, he's naked up there. What's he going to do to Jesus? Nothing. Jesus is like, done. Yes or no? Yes or no? Bible, Bible, yes or no? So the question becomes then, how much power does he have over you? None. Because greater is he that is in you. Oh, we're going to get somewhere. We're going to break a mindset. He has none. You're the body of Christ. You represent Christ on the earth. That's why he gave you all authority. Not some, not a little, not a... No, he said, put on the whole armor of God. Ready? How much victory does Jesus have? Okay, then how much victory do you have? Did you earn it? Did you deserve it? Did you have to fast and pray for it? No, it was given to you free when you got born again. The problem is we don't know it. So what happens? Me, I've been left by my dad, abused by my stepdad, abused and left and dropped, left for dead. So what do I have? A victim mentality. Everyone's out to get me, including the popo. I barely got over that a few years ago. Terrible. Like, I see a cop and my heart beat. Like, for what? I got my license. See, some of you should look at Hey, I got you. What are you scared of? So I had a victim. Victim. Easily offended. Like, if you hurt me, I'd be hurt. Like, oh, you hurt me. You're the devil. But God taught me, you're no longer a victim. Stop letting people put that label on you. Victim, victim, victim. I'm not a victim. I'm not. I was victimized, but I'm not a victim. I am victorious. I am more than a conqueror. I'm a child of God, and I overcome the wicked one. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Shout like you carry this victory. All right, let's go deeper. It all plays into that whole game of fighting people. And don't let people pull you in that fight. Your fight is not flesh and blood. Don't be distracted. You need to focus right now. Don't focus on somebody else's fight. you got your own fight. You got to take your healing back. You got to get your family back. You got to get your money back. You got to get breakthrough back. You you ain't got time to fight their fight. You got your own devil to deal with. Shout, I feel something happening already. Come on, somebody. Shout, yeah. All right, let me go keep teaching. Let me keep teaching. The worship team is already moving up here to get me out. Give me five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Come on. They're so good. Come on up. That's fine. They're fine. All right. All right. Can we keep teaching? All right. Now I want you to say this. Say, above all. 
What, is, uh, what does above all mean? He talks about the whole armor. The breastplate of righteousness, the, 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 the shield, uh, the, 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 the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shoes with the gospel of peace. All these pieces of the armor. But he said above all the other armor. That's why I'm taking time to deal with this one. Because he said above all the other armor God gave you, you have to take the shield of faith which, with which you will be able. Now, I want you to read that. Say, take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Tell your neighbor, take the shield of faith with which you will be able, not God. This is not God's responsibility. This is my responsibility. A lot of people are asking God for something that he cannot give them. Lord, give me victory. And he's like, I already gave you the victory. Lord, give me victory. Give it to you. I already gave it to you. Now get your shield, raise that bad boy up, and start kicking devil. Listen, how many of you have been through Lifestyle of Freedom? Raise your hand. How many are in it right now? Raise your hand. And you've been in it. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm going to help somebody. If your neighbor's hand's not up, your job right now is after service, Get them to lifestyle of freedom so they can learn their authority. Because I tell you, the enemy is taking advantage of God's people way too much. Because God's people don't know who they are. You're not what you've been through. You're not what they said about you. You're not your failure. You're not your past. You are what God says you are. I could feel it in the spirit right now. The devil is getting nervous at me. And it's good. Tell your neighbor, if you have your shield of faith, you will be able to quench, extinguish, and put out every fiery dart of the wicked one. Do you believe that? I believe that. Why do you believe that? It's right there in my Bible. I'm going to say something. I feel violent right now. It's 12 o'clock service. Rowdy got me going. Ah, I want to fight something right now. Listen to me, man. Listen, I don't know who this is for, but some of you have come through a lot, and you're going to have to fight your way out of that thing. But I'm telling you, you're not a manic depressant. You're not suicidal. You're not over. The devil is a liar. You are anointed to win this battle. I pray today I stir in you a hunger to go after the word of God, to learn who you are, to learn what belongs to you, what belongs to your family. Lord Jesus, have mercy. I want you to say this. Quench the fiery, explosive arrows of the enemy. Now, I studied this. Arrow, this is the Roman soldier, and at this time they had three different types of arrows that the Roman soldiers had and their enemies had. You had the regular arrow, like bow and arrow, you know, like the kind, regular arrow. Then you had fiery arrows. You know, those are the ones you soak, like you put cloth on the tip, you soak them, put fire, and they shoot them to try to create fires. But then the third arrow was, this was the most deadly, it was the fiery arrow, the fiery dart. Because what they would do, the middle of the whole arrow was hollowed out and they'd fill it full of explosives and it was it was basically a bomb the the deadliness of it was when you shot it it looked like a regular arrow but it wasn't and you didn't realize what it was until it landed and when it landed it began to devastate and this is crazy because that that those fiery darts have to be dealt with because that fiery dart is not just sent for you it's sent to wipe you out and your family out and everyone connected to you you got to put those jokers out say amen to that all right, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. All right. Okay, so the Bible says, no, let me just say it this way, that when, when you and I have a shield of faith, it extinguishes those fiery darts. The reason it extinguishes the darts, the Roman shield, which, which Paul referred to now as a replica or a typology of a shield of faith, he said that shield, what made it effective, was not just that it was leather and thick and the arrow would stick in, 
and it wouldn't penetrate. It was even more than that. That leather was, would, was, was oiled down all the time. So part of the soldier's job was to oil his shield because he didn't want no cracks in it. Because it was cracked, I mean, it was dry and it was brittle. And if the arrow hit it, the thing could catch fire. And not only would they get all the cracks out of it, then they would dip it in water and soak it. So when the arrow, when they went into battle, so when the arrow hit it, it would not only hit that, that moist, oily leather, but it also hit the water and it would, it would go right out. That oil represents our prayer life. Come on, somebody. And, and that water represents the word of God. Because the enemy is wicked and he's sending wicked, wicked arrows. Wickedness means sorrow. Arrows of sorrow. Wickedness means pain. Wickedness means evil. Look at this. One of the words for the wicked thought that he sends is malignant. Tell you have cancer. Tell you you're going to die. How many people are in this room in bondage to sicknesses that the doctors never even diagnose you with, but it's just in your head? You've been hit with an arrow. Arrows that are malicious. When people attack you verbally, those are arrows to wound the soul, to catch your soul on fire. Arrows of sickness, arrows that are vicious. When a flaming arrow hits its target, which is our emotions, it can throw our, emotional, our emotions into a state of rage, anger, anxiety, unbelief, worry. And if the devil's fiery arrows have been effective in throwing you into rage, anger, anxiety, fear, unbelief, and discouragement, then it is evident there is a crack in the shield of faith and it's been neglected. And God's not going to fix your shield. Your pastor cannot fix your shield. Your leader cannot fix your shield. Your spouse cannot fix your shield. It is your responsibility to clean and fix and wet and prepare your personal shield of faith for battle. Come on, clap like you're going to have your own shield of faith. That's what the Bible says when you are tempted. He is faithful. How many know we are all tempted? Nobody's exempt. But the Bible said he is faithful when you are tempted. And I'm tempted to make a way of escape. The shield of faith is the way of escape. This is the way you can go right in to the promised land with giants everywhere shooting at you. And they just keep ricocheting. You're like a tank and you just keep ricocheting and ricocheting and ricocheting. You can't touch me. You can't hurt me because my faith is strong. Clap like your faith is going to build up to another level. The shield of faith. It's not just a little shield three by seven door type of shield. This thing is huge. You, you, you could see it in the book of Job where Satan came and he told God, I, 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 and God said, what about Job? And Satan said about Job, that boy got a shield of faith around him. I can't touch him. I can't touch his children. I can't touch his home. I can't touch his money. He got a shield of faith. That thing's huge. Come on, somebody. Act like you got a shield of faith around all that pertains to you. There's no limit to your shield. There's no limit to your shield because there's no limit to your faith because your faith is part of your spirit and your spirit has no limitation. You can have little faith, medium faith, big faith. You can have global faith. This is not God's responsibility. This is my responsibility. And I take responsibility for my actions with my shield. I pray today that the people of God would step up and take action and responsibility for your shield. I see in the spirit, many in this room, your shield's damaged, your shield's cracked, your shield's dry, but today your shield is being repaired. Today your shield is being restored. And where the enemy had access, there's no longer access because I shut the door with my shield. Shout like you got a shield. The scripture says, how shall we escape if we neglect our salvation? Religion says, God's going to take care of it. God's going to do it. 
God, God, God. And God's like, wait a minute. I will do it, but you got to give me permission to overcome. I can't do it without you. I need you to be a partner with me. Don't put it all on me. I put it all on you. And together we can take back generations. Shout like you believe it's true. Say it out loud. Faith. Faith. Comes. By hearing. The word of God. One scripture says. This is powerful. Sanctify. Or separate. And cleanse her your wife with the washing of the word so the responsibility of the man of the house the Bible says is to make sure you're diligent to make sure your wife is constantly fed with the word of God he's saying don't let the serpent back in that garden protect your family protect your wife protect your children make sure the word come on where my men at make sure that word is in your house day and night that's the job of a man that's your husband that's your job husband mama's job is not to be the leader spiritually of that home you're the leader spiritually of that home and you have to lead the way by being full of the word of god soaked in the word of god your shield is up you're modeling for your wife this is what it looks like babe to walk by faith and not by sight and out of your overflow you give to her you train her you disciple her you teach her baby get your word baby soak that word baby put your shield up and together we'll believe God for our children and as a family we'll believe God for our other family somebody shout like you're gonna believe God together but see how the enemy works he knows he has no power so what does he do he works on the man gets them all in the flesh he ain't praying he ain't in the word he's like whatever he's trying to escape in everything but God so now the head's gone now mama's left to do all the praying and the word the enemy's got a foothold in there now no man of God you need to step up you need to repent you need to ask God to forgive you and from this day forward that devil ain't coming to this house because as a man of God I'm shielding this house I'm protecting this house I'm putting a wall come on somebody I'm putting a wall up in this house that's why when the devil came against Job he didn't say nothing about Job's wife he said you put a wall around Job's house because God made a divine order the men are the head of the house I'm preaching Forget what America says. Forget what's cute and cultural. God made man first. You are the head of that house. Oh. Gotta get this thing in order, y'all. I, I don't. Because you're wounded, woman. That's okay. God will heal you of that. But I declare that God is gonna raise up men of God that will love God, will love their wives, and love their children. Pastor, I ain't got no man in my house. Then you're the man right now, girl. And you get in that word and you cover your family in the word. And in God's timing, he'll send you the right man who will love God. That's what happened to my mom. That God, God sent Dwayne. Remember when? When, when my dad first came, he was, he was I, we never knew this. He was coming off meth. He was sober and struggling and he would find meth all over the house. But he, but, but God he walked him through that and he wasn't pastor Dwayne he was barely making it my mom was more spiritual than him at that time but God dealt with my mom no you need to let him fail forward you need to let him make mistakes he needs to be the head of this house and little by little pastor Dwayne began to grow spiritually and grow spiritually and grow spiritually now that's a great man of faith and she follows him as he follows Christ come on act like I know this is listen I know I'm gonna say something heavy and you know, it was so hard for my mom. You know why? Because before Dwayne, it was John. And John would abuse us every day. 
John would put a 357 Magnum in her mouth and say, if you go to church, I'll blow your head off. So it was hard for her to trust men because there was abuse there. But that didn't change the truth. The truth was, Dwayne still needed to be the head of that house. And by faith and patience, he became the head of the house. I don't know who this is for, but I'm believing for your husbands. I'm believing for your sons. I'm believing for them to rise up like never before. I believe, oh God, somebody help me preach a little bit. Come on, ladies, help me preach a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm gonna ask you to stand on your feet. I'm gonna close. I'm out of time. Praise God. I said, praise God. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, praise God. Tell him, get your shield up today. Ready? This book of the law, this is God leading an arm. No, no, listen, I need you to focus. Sometimes we don't read the Bible right. Joshua has an army of about a, um, over a million people, and he's to lead them their husbands, their wives, the children. He's to lead them into a promised land that's full of enemies. Enemies that can kill their children. Enemies that can kill their families. Enemies that were stronger. And God tells Joshua, I've already given you the land. You're not going to get the victory, Joshua. You already have it. Tell your neighbor, you're not going to get a victory. You already got the victory. You're just going to walk this thing out. Come on, somebody. How many got victory today in Jesus by faith? And he tells them this. He says, he says, hey. This is almost ridiculous. Like in the natural, you wouldn't understand this. He's like, okay, Joshua, you ready for battle? Yeah. You ready for war? Yeah. You ready to take these people into battle? Yeah. And God would give strategy later, but before he gave any strategy, he says, okay, if you're going to get the victory, here it is. This book, this word shall not depart from your mouth. Like, what the heck does that have to do with killing giants? Everything. Because the power of your future is in your boca. The power of your future is in your mouth. Don't underestimate the power of your mouth. God created with his mouth and you create your future with what you say about it. Joshua, you ready for battle? Yes, Lord. Give me the instructions. Okay. Now, you need to read and meditate on my word day and night. What the heck does that have to do with fighting giants? And God's like, everything. Because the giants are bread for you, mijo. They're chorizo and eggs. Come on, somebody. The problem is not the giant. The problem is the giant in your mind. That's what kept Moses out. That's what kept your parents out. That's what kept your grandparents out. And if you're not careful, it's going to keep you out too. That you may be careful to do it or become it. Now tell your neighbor, if you meditate in that word and you obey that word, you got your shield of faith, then you will, not God, you will make your way prosperous and you will have great success. I feel like slapping somebody. Somebody need to slap your neighbor or something. Shake somebody. Tell them you will be prosperous. You will have success. Watch, watch, watch me. I feel a spirit of faith in here right now. God did not say, I'm going to make you prosperous. I'm going to make you successful. He said, no, you're going to do what? Because God already said you got victory. 
God already said you're success. It's done. God, in God's mind, you're already blessed. You already have victory. But God's like, but I got to get it in your mind because I need your agreement and I need your faith and I need your shield and I need your weapon. Shout like you believe it's true. Have I not? Now, 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 now. Here's the fiery dart. Here it is. Tell your neighbor. You, you ready? That's the wrong neighbor, I think, again. Tell your other neighbor. Say, neighbor. Have, this is what God says to you. Have I not commanded you? I didn't suggest it. I command you. Tell him, I command you on behalf of God. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go it don't matter how many are against you it don't matter how many boards are against you it don't matter how many <laughs> it don't matter how many people are against you it, I don't kind of I don't care what kind of systems against you the devil is a liar if God is for you tell me who can stop you if God is for you tell me who can block you if God is on your side there's no way you can lose Shout like you got a shield called. So everything you've been going through, everything, Aubrey, one reason. He's trying to break down your shield. He's trying to break down. You know what? He wants to curse you. He wants you to believe a lie so you can curse your children and your children curse. But we broke that curse. Everything's about checking our faith. But I'm putting my faith up. I'm declaring I am what God said I am. My family will serve God. The devil is a liar. Somebody clap like you're going to put that shield up. You're going to put that shield up. Put that shield up. You're going to put that shield up. I'm going to see. Lift your hands to the Lord. Say it. I'm going to. I see in the spirit, man. <laughs> I see the army of God. I see you getting your shield ready. I see you getting your weapons ready. I'm telling you, it's not just going to be souls. Property will be released. Breakthroughs in bodies. Breakthrough in company. Every area is... Now, freedom, listen. The shield of faith is so powerful. It doesn't just block. It doesn't just block, but it empowers us for explosive 
kingdom advancement for Ephesians said you will be able tell your neighbor God will make you able tell three people he's gonna make you able tell him that means you're gonna be dunamis that means you're, he's gonna give you when you have a shield of faith explosive power He's going to release dynamic power. You see, when we're strong in faith, this activates the power of God. The woman with the issue of blood needed the power of God. She was sick for 12 years. No hope. There's no hope. There's no hope. But the Bible said that when she reached out by faith, then the power, the power, the ability, the dunama of God, freedom, when the power of God is released, I don't care if they put a murder assignment on your son, it will be broken. There's no demon in hell that can stop the power. The Lord have mercy. When the power of God and faith are operating in our lives, we become like a huge army of tanks moving forward, taking territory, and the enemy is trying to fight a tank with a bow and arrow. And we just keep, get off me, get off me, get off me. We're going to take this city. We're going to take this family. We're going to take this property. We're going to take this and we're going to take that. We're going to take this and I'll have that. And I'll have this and I'll have that. Somebody shout like this is heavy. One more verse and I close. My righteous ones will live by faith. I take no pleasure. I take no pleasure, God says, in the one who shrinks back. We act like it's humility to shrink back. God's like, I have no pleasure in you shrinking back. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to find some warriors up in here. Uh, what is this? What is this? What is this mess? You are the son of God, the daughter of God. You don't shrink. You don't shrink your vision. You don't shrink your dream. You don't shrink what God put on your life. I love this. Uh, tell your neighbor, but neighbor, you don't shrink back. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him you don't shrink back and tell him because we are freedom we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed but we are those who have faith and are saved and go forward let's worship one more time I'm gonna see everybody lift your hands and declare it right there as you worship some of you need to repent father forgive me for neglecting my shield of faith I've allowed fear in I've allowed discouragement in I've allowed weakness in but today I pick up my shield, I pick up my courage, I pick up my strength. Let's worship, come on freedom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected on all of our social media platforms and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hope you enjoyed today's message. We'll see you soon.